faith and the laws of nature seem to have little in common. However, uh, there are some principles in nature that uh, have spiritual applications. And today we are going to look at two of them, namely entropy and inertia. And they will teach us some valuable lessons. Let's first see how they are defined. Uh, entropy is the breaking down of matter and energy in the universe to a state of inert uniformity. This means to a state where it, it doesn't change anymore. Atoms and molecules, basically. That's a very uh, scientific uh, description. Uh, the Webster Dictionary puts it this way. The steady degradation or disorganization of a system or society. So the key word here is degradation. And it applies to a system. This can be a, a biological or a chemical system. But it can also be an organizational system uh, or society, as it mentions. So there is degradation. And it only happens when no action is taken to prevent it. And we all know this. If you have a garden, you understand what the entropy is in, in a sense. If you don't do anything, it will, uh, it will not get better by itself. Uh, others uh, use the, uh, the bedroom of a teenager as an example. It's a bit funny, of course, but there is truth there as well. So that's entropy. Degradation. Inertia is the property of matter by which it remains at rest or in uniform motion in the same straight line, unless there is an external force. In other words, a body at rest will remain at rest, and a body that is moving will tend to continue moving in the same direction uh, unless an external force influences it. Now, the commonality between uh, entropy and uh, inertia is uh, that they can only happen when no action is undertaken to prevent it. And that is where today's message will focus on, on action. Or, to use another word, a taboo word in Christianity, work. In the minds of many Christians, work is or works are linked to salvation. And since salvation is a gift by grace, free gift works are not required. And this encourages actually sp uh, spiritual laziness. In reality, works are not connected to salvation, but to sanctification and to growth. If we refuse to work, then the principle of entropy will turn our faith into a state of disorganization. It will degrade. And if we don't overcome, which is hard work, then the principle of inertia will make us continue to drift in the same way we have allowed ourselves to drift. So I think you can see where I'm going with this. So let's read Matthew 7 verses 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now we all know these uh, verses very well, but um, there are some details that we really should pay attention to. It tells us uh, what to do. The instruction is enter the straight gate. That's what it's about. Enter the straight gate. Now straight means narrow or difficult to pass through. It's then repeated later because it says then again because straight is the gate. The word, the Greek word here is steni, which means narrow or small. It's hard to find, the text says. In other words, it takes hard work an effort to find it. Eh? Many will try to find it, but only few will, it says. 
So one could argue that, okay, maybe so, but once you found it, you don't need to do anything anymore. Well, that is where uh, the second part uh, that is in verse 14 comes in. There it says, narrow is the way. And although King James uses basically the same word, eh, narrow or straight, <coughs> it's not the same word in the original text. Regarding the way, it uses the word Thlivo, which means to press, to afflict, or to trouble. And uh, the Revised Standard Version says the way is hard. And maybe that's more accurate, or at least it's more clear. So the road, the way leading to the narrow gate, is hard, it's difficult. You may have found the gate and know where to go, but the road to it is hard. It's a difficult way. Our walk with the Lord is difficult. It's hard work. There are many obstacles to overcome on the way, even though we know where we are going. It is hard work because the direction and the purpose run counter to human nature. We have to work to overcome inertia. You can say Christianity is hard work. I recently compared it to uh, salmon swimming upstream in a river. They have to continuously work very hard to, to go against the stream and to really move in the, in the upstream direction. And they have to do so continuously because you cannot, uh, they cannot take a break for, uh, for a few seconds because then right away the stream takes them uh, hundreds of uh, yards away from where they are and they have to start all over again. So it's a bit like that. As I said before, the confusion comes in when people wrongly associate works with salvation. We are saved by grace through faith. Salvation is a work, but that is a work that is done and finished on the cross by Jesus. Our works do not change it, they do not earn it, after all it's a gift, but our works, our actions, make us grow. Overcoming is what produces growth. And everyone who has done fitness knows this. You won't grow muscles if you don't work hard. Anyone who is into sports, or makes music, or art, or uh, any of those things, knows that working hard makes you better. It improves your technique and, and your skills. It makes you grow. As they say, practice makes perfect. You have to work for it. You may think about it, you may dream about it and fantasize about it, but that does not change a thing. If you are too lazy to come to action, nothing will change. I sometimes say to motivate people to, to start changing right away, I say uh, sometimes uh, if you don't change anything or if you don't do anything today, then tomorrow will be the same as yesterday. We have to come to action. Does not a parent want her, uh, her or his child to grow? To grow physically, to grow mentally, to grow morally, to grow emotionally and to grow socially. God too wants his children to grow, to grow towards what he is. Let's uh, look a bit more to that. Um, we read from Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So the word that I want to focus on here is dominion, or stewardship. It means work needs to be done to manage our environment, to manage God's creation. He gave that in our hands to do. Work needs to be done. It becomes more clear in the next chapter, Genesis 2, in verse 15. 
And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Here it says to dress it and to keep it. That is work. And anyone who has a garden knows why this work is necessary. Without it, the garden becomes disordered and degrades. The process of entropy will kick in. And mind you that all this is before the fall, before the thorns and thistles come in, before the work in the sweat of thy face comes in. It's before that. In other words, God has built in the principle of entropy in creation to show us that inaction has consequences. Unless, of course, he himself intervenes and restores things, as, by the way, he will do before the millennial reign. And we can read that in Ezekiel. But other than that, when we do not do anything, then uh, things will degrade. When we do not work, there's no growth. And that's not the only thing. On top of that, there will be deterioration. And this is true on a spiritual level as well. Creation shows us that work is part of God's purpose to be fulfilled by us, both physical and spiritual. Let's go to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Paul speaks about labor and about a reward. Labor produces growth. Growth results in reward. In fruit. Labor overcomes the inertia of remaining at rest and it prevents entropy, which causes a deteriorating relationship with God. And Paul continues then in verse 9 and 10 For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. Husbandry is the field. You are God's building, according to the grace of God which is given unto me. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. The message is clear. He literally says, we are laborers. The foundation is laid, the foundation is Christ. Now we must build thereon. Let every man take heed how he builds thereon. We are working mentally and physically the best we can. It is hard work and there are forces working against us. And these forces are inertia and entropy. Paul makes it also clear to Timothy when he writes in 2 Timothy 2 verse 3 through 6, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth and tangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. So here he uses three examples back to back um, that, that make this point. First, he speaks about a soldier. A soldier has to focus on his mission. And he works hard. He literally fights to complete it. And victory is the reward. And then he mentions an athlete. An athlete is not crowned, not rewarded, unless he or she competes according to the rules, lawfully. Um, and uh, lastly, he mentions a farmer. A farmer will produce fruit if he works hard. And he will also be the first to enjoy it. That's the reward. But the point is that in order to fulfill what God has called us to do, the good work that he has prepared for us, we must work. If we are lazy, we may still be saved, but we, are not, we have not built or produced anything. And we have not pleased the Lord in the way we could. And we run a great danger. Think of the parable that Jesus told about the talents. And the one that uh, just hit the talent and uh, did not do anything with it. Who was uh, cast into out of darkness. That's the risk we run by doing nothing. 
So you might say, what's the problem? Why do we not work? Why is it so difficult? Well, there are several reasons. I will mention a few. First and foremost, it's human nature. We are lazy by nature. That's inertia. We don't move or act when we don't have to or when we are not made to. So that's what the first thing. The second thing is that we are not taught good work habits by our parents. And that is increasingly so as generations follow each other. And really at this point you wonder if it can get any worse. But it's, it's true uh, in general, uh, in society. It's also true um, spiritually, by our spiritual leaders. We are also not taught to, to, uh, to do work. The third thing, we are made to believe that uh, all that one has to do to be saved is to believe in Jesus. And although that is true, it is also incomplete. It must begin with repentance and we must continue to show, to produce uh, the fruit of repentance, eh? as it says in Matthew 3 verse 8. So we have to do something. Repentance is action. It means that we turn away from what we were doing. We go in a different direction. We change something. We do, we, there's action. But then we have to produce the fruit of repentance. So it continues. It's not a one-time action. Um, and the last thing I want to mention is, uh, is the, why we don't, don't work is because uh, of feeling. Feeling is more important than anything, uh, anything nowadays. If I feel good, it must be good. Uh, and of course, it uh, goes together with our nature. Our nature causes us to feel good when we do nothing, when we stay inside our comfort zone. That feels good, that feels comfortable. Uh, but that is uh, inertia. Eh? A body at rest will stay at rest unless it's forced to move. People will always find excuses to remain at rest. What uh, some excuses that I come across uh, often is uh, a very famous one, of course. Once saved, always saved. When people say that, oftentimes what they mean, the, the meta message that they're saying is, I don't need to do anything now that I said a certain prayer or now that I'm baptized. Once saved, always saved. I'm okay. Uh, the other excuse to not uh, do anything is faith is a gift. And thus I don't need to do anything to produce it. I have no responsibility. And it's what I said before. That is because wrongly works are linked to salvation. That's the whole wrong idea. They are uh, linked to growth. Yeah? Um, Another thing I've heard uh, is, uh, yeah, early Christians eh, in, in, uh, in Jesus' times and, uh, and shortly thereafter, they didn't have Bibles and uh, they didn't have church buildings and everything, and they were good. So why do I need to read my Bible? I can also be good without it. But, um, yeah, that situation of not working, of uh, inaction, this, uh, this two things, it's, uh, first of all, prevents us from growing and producing fruit. But not only that, it actually makes us go from bad to worse. And so that's where entropy kicks in. Because doing nothing means there is steady degradation or disorganization. And that's why God told Adam and Eve to dress and keep the garden. That is why he tells us to produce fruit, to use our talents, uh, to use our time wisely, to run the race, to fight the good fight, etc. There are many examples. We are in a relationship and uh, anyone who, who is married uh, knows that in order to keep uh, that relationship pleasant, uh, you need to work on it. And by the way, that is not uh, a burden, that's joyful. If it's a burden, it's not a problem uh, apparently, but no, that's joyful. But if you don't do that, then it's going to deteriorate. Uh, there is this song, uh, love is something you do, and this is very true. So, in summary, 
Works are not connected to salvation, but to sanctification and to growth. Entropy is pulling us toward disorganization, and it has to be worked against. The only way to stop entropy is with an external force, to work against it. At the same time, inertia wants us to keep going in the same direction that we are. And it requi requires uh, effort to overcome, to overcome that force and to get out of our comfort zone. It takes a lot of effort to overcome one's inertia and to resist entropy in our relationship with Jesus. But we must do it. We run a great risk if we don't. These forces, uh, they, they continue to work if we don't do anything. And that's uh, detrimental. We cannot, to use another biblical uh, expression, we cannot sit on our leaves. We cannot just do nothing and let things happen because then the wrong things are happening. There's work to do. There's work to do. And so I would say, let's do it. Amen.